before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 11. John 11. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly, and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it 
that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees, and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council, and said, What do we, for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What think ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord is doing wonders already in your life, in my life, in my life. The Lord will keep his covenant with you in Jesus' name. I welcome everyone connected with us to the combined service, covenant service, the very first Sunday of this year. All the Sundays of January, we'll be having covenant messages. And I want to tell you, anywhere you are, connect with the covenant services every problem will be ruled away all tears will be wiped away you will come in a personal profitable perpetual covenant with the lord every sunday and this will mark a new beginning in your life in your ministry in your family all through the year in jesus name <laughs> father we thank you for this day thank you for this first sunday of the year and we come to a covenant with you we have been in covenant with you already but we want to remind ourselves of your faithfulness and we're praying lord you'll be faithful as your nature is to everyone without exception in jesus name bless your people from this moment greater blessings we have ever known will come to everyone we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and the people of god said a personal amen Today, as we begin our covenant series, I'm talking to you on faith in our covenant keeping God. Faith in our covenant keeping God. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, reading from verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations that means in our generation in the generation past in the generations to come God has proved himself and this year you will know definitely that our God is a covenant keeping God. It says in that verse 9, Know therefore, that is, as you look at God, as you examine His word, as you believe His promises, here is what you know therefore, that the Lord thy God, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, if he has called you out of Egypt and you're on your way to the land of promise, he is thy God and his God is a faithful God and he keeps covenant, he keepeth covenant. Not only that he kept in the past or that he will keep in the future, he keepeth covenant and he keepeth mercy with them, all of them that love him and keep his commandments and he does that in every generation and he does that to a thousand generations it will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name when we talk about covenant with god covenant with god through christ grants us number one a life that cannot be destroyed as you come into covenant with God, this moment you're going to have a life that no evil power can destroy in Jesus' name. 
number two a love that cannot be denied you will experience his love and he will not deny you he will manifest his love unto you number three a righteousness that cannot be devalued he'll give you righteousness that in the presence of god that righteousness will always have value it's the righteousness of christ and when you come as a child of god to god in prayer he will look at you as he looks at his righteousness your son number four a rest that cannot be disturbed it will give you rest in the day and rest in the night and nothing will disturb your rest or your sleep in jesus name rest in your soul rest in your spirit and rest all through your life in jesus name number five a joy that cannot be diminished he'll give you joy your life will be full of joy this year sorrow will vanish away sadness will not have any place at your doorstep in jesus name number six a hope that cannot be disappointed all disappointment now is behind you you will not be disappointed in your expectation even today at the service your expectation will not be destroyed i will not be disturbed in jesus name number seven a light that cannot be dimmed or darkened nobody will dim your light nobody will darken your darkness will darken your light number eight a, pure, a purity that cannot be defiled defilement will not come upon your life number nine a power that cannot be defeated nothing will defeat you this year behold i give unto you power what do you have this year behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the devil all the power of darkness and nothing shall by any means hurt you you go out you are preserved you come in you are preserved your wife goes out your husband goes out and is preserved she is preserved in jesus name your children go out they come back they are preserved in health and nothing will defeat the power of god in their lives in jesus name number 10 a promise that cannot be disannulled the promise of god will not be disannulled in your life that promise whatever the promise is for your body for your soul for your spirit all that promise of god will be yours in jesus name he promises health he promises healing he promises prosperity he promises progress he promises blessings untold and those promises they will not be disannulled in your life in jesus name number 11 a wealth that cannot be depleted your wealth your wealth in every way your wealth in every area of your life will not be depleted in jesus name and then number 12 a heaven that cannot be disputed nobody will dispute or debate or destroy your hope of getting to heaven in jesus name that's what we expect and is the fullness of the provision of the promise of the power and of every plan of god in our lives and they are fulfilled in your life in jesus name the covenant that we have with god covenant faith in our covenant keeping god he keeps covenant is a faithful god is a god who does not lie is a god whose word cannot be destroyed and the faith we need to have he even gives us that faith as a gift a faith in the covenant keeping god there are three things we're looking at in the message today number one is the foundation of god's covenant with his purchased people he buys us 
he purchases us he redeems us he takes us out of egyptian bondage and he brings us into the liberty and the land of promise number two is the faithfulness to god's covenant and to his peculiar people he saves us and he makes us peculiar makes us different from all the people on the face of the earth and he becomes faithful unto us in every way because we are his peculiar people point number three is the fullness of god's covenant for his precious people you are precious in his sight and he will not allow any sin from the underworld and from the other world to hurt your life he will preserve you to the very end in jesus name i thought you will say amen, amen. And those of us uh, connected online, uh, when I say in Jesus' name, uh, online there you ought to say amen, that will drive away the devil and all of us in the local churches and district churches, anywhere, when I say amen, it's like I'm in front of you, it's like I'm with you right there, you will say an amen that will clear every cloud and every doubt away because this year is going to be a renewed a reviving and a great year for everyone in jesus name <clears throat> point number one now we're looking at the foundation of god's covenant with his purchased people in exodus chapter 19 exodus chapter 19 reading from verse 5 now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine he shall be a peculiar treasure unto me he purchases us and he says we're now different we're distinct we're peculiar and he doesn't look at us like he looks at all the members of our family he doesn't look at us as he looks at all the neighbors around us because we are peculiar above all people on the earth as we look at this the foundation of the covenant we have with god as his purchased people there are three things number one the covenant with the omnipotent is so great is so powerful and he has covenant with us and we need to remember the one having covenant with us is the omnipotent god all powerful god all sufficient god he will not fail in your life the word of God tells you, and a mouthpiece for that word declared unto you, there is no failure in your life this year in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number two, the condition of our obedience. If we obey him, he will show his omnipotence in every one of our lives. And then number three is the confession of his obligation. His obligation. He has obligation to fulfill his promise, to manifest his power in your life. And you always confess that. Don't let the devil put any of his own words in your mouth and don't confess the word of Satan don't let ignorant people those who are ignorant of the promises of God don't let them put their word in your mouth the only word in your mouth this year is the word of the obligation of the almighty God and I see your life your life will get to the highest peak you have ever got to in Jesus name number one number one is the covenant with the omnipotent the covenant with the omnipotent in Deuteronomy chapter 29 and uh, chapter 29 we're reading from verse 9 Deuteronomy chapter 3, 29 verse 9 uh, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them 
that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Please underline those words in all, in all, in all that ye do. My student, there, uh, distinction in every subject. In all that ye do. Professional man, there, because God is the omnipotent one. Our God is able. I said, Our God is able. He will take you from this level and take you to the highest level in Jesus' name. The God we are talking about in Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32, reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32. We are reading from verse 17. And Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing to hide for thee there is nothing to hide for thee that's the omnipotent god that's the all-powerful god and is watching over you and is watching over his word unto you and he has a covenant with you what if the best doctor in the land has a covenant with you and he says anytime you call i'll take all the gadgets all the instruments everything you need and i will be there at the moment you call what if the richest man in the country calls upon you and he mentions your name and he says is that your name you say yes sir he says anything you need this year i commit myself i'm so rich i don't even know what to do with all my riches any need you have just a call and everything is fulfilled now we're talking about the god who is omnipotent greater than the richest of men and greater than the rich the the, uh, the most uh, equipped and uh, expert uh, doctor and he's saying uh, i will be with you i will take care of you your soul your spirit your body your family your life i will take care of you is the omnipotent god look at verse 27 in that chapter it says behold i am the lord not that i was yes it was not that i will be yes it will ever be but is the ever present i am that i am i am the lord the god of all flesh the god of all flesh anybody having flesh over there i said anybody having flesh over there where are you is your god the god of all flesh and that flesh will not be rotting flesh that flesh will not be a sick flesh and that flesh will not be a destroyed flesh because god is the god of your flesh is there anything to hide for me you need it answer in your life nothing to hide for god this is that god that comes into a covenant relationship with you look at verse 40 there it says in verse 40 and i will make an everlasting covenant with them after telling us in verse 17 and verse 27 that there is nothing to hide for me i made the world out of nothing i created the universe out of nothing then it says that omnipotent god will make an everlasting covenant with them that i will not turn away from them he will not turn away from you i said he will not turn away from you and then he says but i will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me the devil will not separate you from the almighty in matthew chapter 19 verse 26 matthew chapter 19 verse 26 he tells us but jesus beheld them and said unto them with men this is impossible but with god somebody there tell me but with god all things are possible that's the omnipotent god in luke chapter 1 verse 37 luke chapter 1 verse 37 it says with god nothing shall be impossible 
look at your life today and look at your need today for with God nothing shall be impossible that is the God that is having covenant with you look at verse 72 in verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant after he had said with God nothing shall be impossible then he comes to the fact that he is making or he has made and he remembers his holy covenant with us number one then the covenant with the omnipotent we're coming to number two there in number two is the condition of our obedience the condition of our obedience in exodus chapter 23 looking at verse 22 the condition that every promise will be fulfilled the condition that all the details of the covenant will be fulfilled is that we are obedient unto him look at that verse 22 if ye and if thou shall indeed obey 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 his voice and do all that i speak then i will be an enemy to thine enemies don't worry about enemies this year if anybody is an enemy to you god will settle that they will not disturb the progress in your life in jesus name just obey the lord and the consequence is i will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries look at verse 25 there in verse 25 and ye shall serve the lord your god and ye shall serve the lord your god are you there i said are you there you will serve the lord your god rain or sunshine will not hold you back pandemic for other people and in community will not hold you back online people give me your good amen everybody everywhere amen i say nothing nothing on earth nothing in the sky nothing in the sea nothing in the bush nothing in the forest will hold you back from serving the lord in jesus name and then he shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee remember that's the omnipotent all-powerful god telling you i will take sickness away from the midst of thee from inside your kidney from inside your lungs from inside your chest and from inside your bone god will take every sickness out of you in jesus name look at verse 26 there is something to mark here there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land in thy family in thy church in thy community look at this mark this one the number of thy days i will fulfill the number of thy days i will fulfill remember is the omnipotent god is the all-powerful god that says that i come to deuteronomy chapter 11 i'm going to read verse 27 first and then i will come to verse 21 in verse 27 deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 27 a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the lord your god a blessing it will run after you it will follow after you it will overtake you blessings in the day and blessing in the night and blessing when we're in church together and blessing when you're all alone by yourself a blessing if you will obey the commandments of the lord your god which i command you this day what's going to happen if we obey the lord if we keep to the commandments of the lord let's come now to verse 21 in verse 21 that your days may be multiplied i didn't hear the appropriate amen 
that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children all your children will live healthy will live long and we live to go on and be beyond you in Jesus tarries in Jesus name in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them here is why I preserve verse 21 after verse 27 that last line there this is mine I said this is mine look at it as the days of heaven upon earth no recession in heaven no recession in your life there's no devastation there's no pandemic in heaven there's no pandemic in your life and there is no limitation in heaven there's no limitation in your life as the days of heaven on the earth this is the year god will fulfill that promise in your family that will be done on earth as it is in heaven all because we're obedient to the word of the lord we're coming now to number three here and it is our confession of his obligation our confession of his obligation what that means is god has a promise an obligation a commitment he made to you personally think about yourself as if you were the only person here on earth and god said something to you that's how abraham thought about himself abraham did not equate himself with lord abraham did not equate himself with all the members of the family abraham was singled out by god and he singled out himself and god changed his name and god changed his destiny now you are confessing from your mouth what belongs to you our confession of his obligation look at some 81 looking at verse 10 some 81 reading from verse 10 i am the lord thy god i am the lord thy god i am the lord thy god which brought thee out of the land of egypt i am out of egypt already i am out of darkness already i'm out of oppression already now look at what it says as he has brought you out open thy mouth wide and i will feel it open thy mouth wide and i will feel it god is going to fill your life everything you open your mouth to confess this year and you say i am making progress i am well the promises of god are yes and amen in my life I'm all right and there's no problem in my life in my family I'm saying it for you and I expected you say it for yourself in my family there'll be no havoc there'll be no danger there'll be no incurable disease open your mouth wide and I will feel it it will fill your mouth with the blessings of God this year in Jesus name second corinthians chapter 4 we're looking at verse 13 in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed therefore have i spoken you say what you believe you speak what you believe you declare what you believe you decree what you believe if you don't believe that negative thing why will you say that negative thing about yourself about your husband about your children about your family about your local church about your district church about the group church about the regional church about the church in the state about the church in the nation if you read something you know, negative and you know that's not the word of God when God when Jesus said upon this rock I will build my church 
and the gates of hell tell me shall not prevail against it that's what you believe that's what you confess that's what you believe that's what you declare this year you will declare only the word of God that you believe in Jesus name he says we also believe and therefore speak we also believe and therefore speak make it personal i also believe and therefore speak it is that word that you believe and that is the word you will declare as he promised you healing that's what i believe and that's what i confess as he promised you deliverance that's what i believe and that's what i confess as he promised you progress that's what i believe and that's what i confess as he promised you that you'll climb the the highest mountain and you will reach the peak that's what i believe and that is what i confess i pray that as the other people old covenant new covenant what they believed is what they confess when the promise was given to abraham he confessed that promise that was given to him when it was the turn of joshua what the lord had told him that's what he confessed when he came to the time of caleb it is the word that that was given to him that is what he confessed and when he came to David and Goliath stood before him what he believed is what he confessed when it came to Daniel that's what he believed and that is what he confessed and now he comes to the New Testament and we're talking about Paul the Apostle he said I believe God it shall be even as it was told me it is the word that God had given them it says day receive that word and they confess that word it says we also of the new testament generation we also of this generation since his covenant is going to be fulfilled in all generations we also believe i also believe and we speak and i speak that promise of the yes and amen in your life in jesus name look at acts chapter 27 we're reading from verse 25 acts chapter 27 reading from verse 25 it says wherefore sirs paul the apostle was in the boat with other people in the ship with other people but it was not like them you might be in the same place with other people the same community with other people and the same environment with other people but you are not one there I said you are not like them it says therefore sirs be of good cheer for I believe God that it shall be that was his confession we confess the obligation of the Lord the promise of the Lord and the commitment of the Lord unto us it says it shall be even as it was told me how can I apply that to myself if you are here if you had the word at the time of the crossover watch night service and Jesus said let us pass Pass over to the other side you are confessing that every time I believe it shall be even as it was told me if you were with the workers on Saturday come and see and you'll see greater things that you have ever seen all the years past you will say I believe God it shall be even as it was told me and you are here today and the Lord is saying to you I am the Lord your God and I made all the earth I created the whole universe is there anything to hard for me there is nothing to hard for him you will confess his obligation in your life in my life in my family in your family there is nothing too hard for him and you will realize that open your mouth wide and you will feel it in Jesus name we're coming to Romans chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 17 Romans chapter 4 we're looking at verse 17 as it is written I have made thee I have made thee even before you see it happen it has been done Abraham did not have any child yet and God said I have made you a father of many nations before whom he believed even God who quickness the dead 
and colored those seeds which be not as though they were. He colored those seeds which be not as though they were. How about that? He knows the edge from the beginning. He knows what you are going to have in February. He knows that from January. He knows what you are going to have in August. He knows that from January. The victory you are going to have until the edge of the year. God knows that already. And God is declaring that unto you. And you confess his obligation. What he said he will do. And what he said he will provide. You confess that in your life. Look at verse 18. In verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations he believed and he believed against hope even though the situation was hopeless yet he kept on believing there will be no hopeless situation in your life that's what God has said and that's what God is going to do according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be look at verse 19 here is a secret how God fulfilled the promise in the life of Abraham this is the secret how God fulfills the promise in the life of all that have gone before us and this is the secret how God fulfills that promise in the life of Abraham everyone and being not weak in faith not being weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb and then look at verse 20 there in verse 20 and he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to God before Isaac was born he was giving glory to God before the fulfillment of the promise he was giving glory to God and before he saw what the Lord had said and what the Lord had given he was giving glory to God we're told the reason why in verse 21 it says it says I'm being fully persuaded this year I am fully persuaded that blessings of God will multiply in your life this year I am fully persuaded that this year will be very different from every other year you have lived in your life in Jesus name this year I am fully persuaded whatever the storm and what, whatever the wave and whatever the harassment that may go on anywhere or everywhere in your life there will be the peace of God that is greater than anything you have ever seen in your life in Jesus name and the power of God will be so fulfilled in your life will so operate in your life will be so manifested in your life that you will feel that power you will sense that power you will know that power and the power will not fail in your life in Jesus name that's how Abraham got what the Lord promised him he was fully persuaded I am fully persuaded for you and for yourself you are fully persuaded as well in Jesus name persuasion that cannot be reversed persuasion that cannot be diminished persuasion that is there and will always be there and that persuasion in your life will be realized in Jesus name he tells us in that verse 21 and being fully persuaded that what he had promised is able to perform that's the reason why it was given to him and that's the reason why it will be given to you in Jesus name you see there is the covenant of the omnipotent and you see there is the condition that the Lord has given us as the condition of obedience and then the confession of our mouth the utterance of our mouth the declaration of our mouth that God himself by his mighty power because he cannot fail he will fulfill that promise in your life in Jesus name give me a good good amen we come 
to point number two now and is the faithfulness to God's covenant and his peculiar people the faithfulness to God's covenant not only faithfulness of the covenant the faithfulness to the people of God the peculiar people of God we're coming back to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 9 Deuteronomy chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 9 it tells us who God is and it tells us how God will work it says no therefore that God the Lord thy God he is God and because he is God is a faithful God which keepeth his covenant and is a mercy he keeps with them that love him and the people that keep his covenant he gives that unto us and he keeps the commandment of the Lord for us and the commandments of the Lord and the covenant of the Lord they be fulfilled in your life in Jesus name he is faithful we come to first Corinthians chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 9 first Corinthians chapter 1 we're looking at verse 9 it tells us who God is that God is faithful who has called us to be children of God and because of that faithfulness he will not fail in your life all right he will not fail in my life he will not fail in my family he will not fail in your family and your life in Jesus name it says God is faithful God is faithful by whom ye were called it's God that called you and because God looked at you and God spotted you out and God chose you out of a great multitude that God was called you he was faithful in salvation he'll be faithful in all the other promises he has given to you God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord the faithfulness to God's covenant and his peculiar people we're looking at three things and number one is the fact concerning God's peculiar people the facts concerning God's peculiar people number two our firmness in commitment to God's perpetual plan he has a plan he had a plan for Israel as a nation he has a plan for his church the body of Christ and he had a plan for an individual Abraham he has a plan for you as an individual he had a plan for every one of his disciples he had a plan for Peter he has a plan for you and the Lord will be firm in that plan and you need to be firm as well our firmness he commitment to God's perpetual plan number three is our faith and consideration of God's present promises our faith in the promises of God at present our faith in the consideration and the consideration of all his promises to the present time if there will be no failure in your life in Jesus name we're coming to number one here the facts concerning God's peculiar people facts concerning God's peculiar people it tells us in Exodus chapter 19 and we're reading from verse 5 Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 look at what he calls you here he says now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then he shall be a peculiar treasure unto me if you obey what's the fact about God's peculiar people God's peculiar people are obedient people repent they obey believe they obey be ye holy they obey go and evangelize they obey obey the word of God they give in to that and it is that obedience that makes you a peculiar treasure unto the Lord then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine look at verse 6 and it says and ye shall be 
unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That's the peculiarity of the children of God in Deuteronomy chapter 14. Looking at verse 2, Deuteronomy chapter 14, we're reading from verse 2. It tells us, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. You see the connection there? Thou art not a sinful people, not a backsliding people, not a defiled people, not a corrupt people, not wayward people, not hypocritical people. Thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. When you pray and you are saved and the righteousness of God comes into your life, you pray, you are sanctified and the Holy nature of Christ is transferred into your life and you live day by day and step after step and you're living in every situation in your community a different life and you're living an uncompromising life and you're living an obedient life and you're living a humble life and you're living a loving life and you're living a yielded life and every time and every way you are holy unto the Lord you become God's peculiar people we're looking at verse 3 there in verse 3 it tells us thou shalt not eat any abominable sin thou shalt not touch any abominable sin thou shalt not think any abominable sin thou shalt not go to any abominable place and that makes you a real child of God a peculiar person unto the Lord in Titus chapter 2 reading from verse 14 Titus chapter 2 reading from verse 14 it says who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity that's what makes us peculiar we're saved we're redeemed we're taken out of all iniquity and we're not living like other people dressing like other people behaving like other people acting like other people and we're not doing any sin behind in any darkness somewhere but were in the light and we let our light so shine before all men that they may see our good works and glorify our father who is in heaven because we are redeemed from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works those are the peculiar people of God and that's the fact concerning them they live a different life a distinct life a distinguished life and they are the peculiar people of the Lord. I pray that your life will be peculiarly holy in Jesus' name. Peculiarly humble in Jesus' name. Peculiarly obedient in Jesus' name. Peculiarly loving in Jesus' name. And peculiarly yielded to the commandments of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two is our firmness in the covenant of the Lord. Our firmness in commitment to God's perpetual plan. He has a plan and that plan is perpetual. Whatever plan God had, he still has that plan today and that is perpetual. Whatever commandment he has given in his word, that's perpetual. And whatever distinctive declaration he has made and he says this is how you will work and this is how you will live. He makes us peculiar and he makes that perpetual in our lives and we're firm, we're firm as uh, Daniel was firm in Babylon, as Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were firm in Babylon and as uh, Samuel was firm in the house of Eli and as Peter and John were firm before the Sanhedrin before those Pharisees and those Sadducees, you are firm in your commitment to God's perpetual plan look at Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 but Daniel purposed in his heart 
Daniel purposed in his heart that's what it means that you take a decision that you make up your mind that you say in your heart this is how I will live in your heart you say I'm going to commit myself to the perpetual plan and perpetual precept of God and perpetual commandment of God like Daniel did even if there were no there's no pastor there with you no father no mother there with you and no member of the church there with you you say here I stand upon the word of God as Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the priests of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself you purpose in your heart and you say this is what I will do and this is what I will not do this is where I can go and this is where I cannot go it is that purpose of heart to the perpetual plan perpetual promise perpetual precept perpetual a commandment of the Lord that makes you precious and peculiar in the sight of the Lord we're told in Psalm 17 verse 3 Psalm 17 we're looking at verse 3 is telling us here that purpose we ought to have it says thou as proved mine heart thou hast visited me in the night thou hast tried me and shall find nothing look at this now I am purposed I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress I am purposed that my hand will not transgress my feet will not transgress my mouth will not transgress no member of my body will transgress that is the purpose of a child of God who is saved, who is sanctified, who is distinct and holy and peculiar in the sight of the Lord. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. It tells us in Acts chapter 11 verse 23 Acts 11 reading from verse 23 is telling us here who when he came and had seen the grace of God you know we can see the grace of God there's some people that say I'm living by by grace let's see that I live by grace let's see that the grace of God is multiplied and fulfilled in my life let's see that by grace I am saved let's see that when the grace of God is in our lives the grace that saves saving grace and the grace that sanctifies sanctifying grace and the grace that is sufficient for every challenge in your life sufficient grace and the grace that sustains you in every temptation and that is uh, uh, the sustaining grace of God we can see that if the grace is there it will act itself out because the grace of God as a appeared unto us and that grace of God is teaching us that denying all godliness and worldly laws we should live soberly and godly and righteously in this present world when we're looking for the appearance of our Lord who gave himself for us that he might purify us and redeem us from all iniquity and purify us and he's going to give us the zeal for good works you purpose in your heart and your purpose in your life your purpose that you'll cleave unto the Lord when Barnabas came to this church in Antioch and when he came and had seen the grace of God he was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart you know if you don't make up your mind that this new year I will live in a new way you know, the old life will still resurface if you don't make up your mind and decide and determine and say this year wherever I am Babylon or Rome or anywhere a school a college a university an office a community wherever I find myself the purpose of my heart the determination of my life is that I will live a different life and the grace of God you'll find sufficient in your life in Jesus name that will purpose 
purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord with purpose of heart they will cleave unto the Lord let's come to number three here number three here is our faith and consideration of God's present promises a faith as well as consideration anything that happens I don't consider that thing happening sickness I don't consider any pain infirmity I don't consider any new thing that comes that's a strange thing I'm not considering that all I'm considering is the present promise of God in my life all you are considering is the present promise of the Lord in your life and the Lord will give you all the consideration of faith and of the promises of God in your life in Jesus name our faith and consideration of God's present promises look at Matthew chapter 21 we're reading from verse 21 Matthew chapter 21 verse 21 Jesus answered and said unto them verily I say unto you if ye have faith and doubt not if ye have faith and doubt not ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree but also if ye shall say unto this mountain if you will say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea it shall be done Amen. I can't hear your voice it shall be done it will be done in jesus name how will you have every prayer answered every utterance affirmed every declaration confirmed everything you say everything you consider everything you claim how can you have that in your life number one faith in god faith in god is omnipotent it cannot fail it cannot change faith in god have faith number two doubt not in your heart doubt not in your heart you have given the word you have made the declaration you have made the request number one you have faith in god number two you have so much faith that you don't doubt in your heart number three say it out say it out that mountain i don't permit you there that sickness i don't permit you there that infirmity i I don't permit you there say it out number four see it done see it done that's how abraham that's how he got the promises of god fulfilled having faith in god and doubting not in your heart and saying it out and seeing it done and then number five is to put action to your faith if god has healed you why are you lying down there if god has prospered you why are you still sorrowful didn't you read about Anna? after Eli had spoken to her uh, we are told that she got up and she was no more sad put action to your faith because faith without works is dead faith without action is dead I said it I believe it and I know it is so and then number six is to rejoice before the Lord full of joy because I know the Lord has answered my prayer and the Lord God has done it it will be done in Jesus name look at verse 22 there in verse 22 all things how many things church not everybody is talking I said how many things all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing ye shall receive believing ye shall receive and then you'll be full of joy I said you'll be full of joy we we'll come now to point number three point number three is the fullness of God's covenant for his precious people God's covenant the fullness of that and the fulfillment of that with God's precious people uh, look at John chapter 1 verse 16 John chapter 1 verse 16 and of his fullness have we all received grace for grace was that talking about he says look at grace like the ocean like the sea like the river 
and then you go there and take a bucket out and then you go back again and the sea and the river is still full and you take it again and when you finish that you go back to the riverside again there is no thought in your heart that the river would have dried up because he is taken out of that river she is taken out of that river i'm taken out of that river and it is full all the time every time this year you go to the presence of god you'll find the fullness of grace grace for every challenge and grace for every infirmity and grace for every everything the lord will allow in your life you will have grace for everything in jesus name of his fullness have we all received grace for grace it tells us in ephesians chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 19 ephesians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 19 it says and to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of god ye might be filled with all the fullness of god ye might be filled with all the fullness of god and you know sometimes you have a drum of water and that drum of water you don't want the water there you want all the water to be poured away and you want to fill that drum with some good sand and then you're trying you're pushing and pushing the drum and you don't have enough strength to push all that to push that drum what do you do leave the water there and bring in the sand as you are pouring the sand the water will go out of itself you didn't hear me i said as you are pouring in the sand the water will go out of itself if there's anything in your life which is not all right and then you fight against it and you bump against it and you try to contend with it and the thing is still there don't worry about that thing that's like the water in the drum bring in the grace of god bring in the goodness of God bring in the promise of God bring in the power of God bring in your confession of who God is and you are pouring that heavier sand that water dirty water will go out of your life in Jesus name bring in the praise of God and bring in your joy in the Lord as you are bringing that in all that water all those negative things this year they are out of your life in Jesus name and you will be filled with all the fullness of God what's the implication of that look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says now when is it in your life I mean the blessing of God when is it in your life that new life and that new possession when is it in your life now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us that power will work in your life every day every moment the power of god will not fail in your life in jesus name and it says in verse 21 it says unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen the lord will bring his fullness into your life in jesus name number one we're looking at the covenant and promise of healing number two the covenant for partakers of his holiness number three the completeness of provision for his heirs number one is the covenant and promise of healing look at uh, exodus chapter 15 uh, reading from verse 25 the covenant and the promise of healing you are healed today you'll be healthy tomorrow 
rest of the year you'll be healthy in jesus name and open your bible open your bible in exodus chapter 15 we're looking at verse 26 exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and he said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes look at the covenant now i will put none of these diseases upon thee which i have brought upon the egyptians for i am always i am i am is ever present i am the lord that healeth thee the lord that healed in the past the lord that is healing now and the lord that will continue to heal i am the lord that healeth thee healing will never stop in your life health will never be diminished in your life in jesus name jeremiah chapter 33 we're looking at verse 3 in jeremiah chapter 33 we're looking at verse 3 here is the promise of the lord and here is a covenant that god has with whom, with his own people call unto me and i will answer thee you are praying this morning will god answer you will he give you solution yes. will he heal your body yes. will he heal every member of your family yes. you see what it says call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not this year miracles you have never known you will know the power you have never experienced you will experience and the progress you have never experienced in your life you will experience in jesus name he says the miracle is as near as your calling the miracle is as near as you're picking up the phone and phoning heaven and talking to heaven and saying this is my need and the moment you mention that need it is done in jesus Jesus name call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things great and mighty miracles great and mighty deliverance and great and mighty healing and great and mighty provision which thou knowest not look at verse 6 there in verse 6 it says behold I will bring health and kill I will bring it health and kill and I will kill them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth and then in verse 9 in verse 9 it says and it shall be to me a name of joy and you will be a name of joy and a praise and an honor before all nations of the earth which shall hear all the good they will hear of all the good that i do unto them and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness for all the prosperity that i procure unto it it will happen in every life of ours in Jesus name Matthew chapter 8 we're looking at verse 16 Matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 16 when the evening was come when the day was coming to the close they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed how many of them and delivered how many of them and healed all that was sick why how look at verse 17 in verse 17 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took himself christ himself the redeemer himself our savior himself jesus the same yesterday today and forever himself the one that cannot fail himself the one that sacrificed for us on the cross of calvary that healing and health that holiness and righteousness may be ours himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses they will carry every sickness away 
away from your life in Jesus' name. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter chapter 2, we're reading from verse 24. It says, Who is own self? Bear our sins in his own body. He has taken the sins away. Release all those sins. Repent of all those sins. Take out all those sins. Reject them that they will not have dominion over your life because he himself, his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes tell me by whose stripes make it make it personal you have been healed already in jesus name and remember jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever number two now is the covenant with partakers of his holiness the covenant with the partakers of his holiness we're coming to luke chapter one and we're reading from verse 72 luke chapter one we're reading from verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant when you get saved he has remembered his holy covenant when your sins are forgiven you are set free he remembers his holy covenant when god gives you the power and the dominion to overcome every temptation he remembers his covenant when he changes your nature and imparts his nature into you and he gives you that holiness without which no man shall save the lord he remembers his covenant and when he answers your prayer everything he has promised to abraham and he gives that to you he remembers his covenant in verse 73 it says the oath which is where to our father abraham <clears throat> in verse 74 verse 74 that he will grant unto us he will grant unto me you're sleeping he will grant unto me it's too early in the new year to be tired to be weary he has granted unto me that you will grant unto us that we've been delivered from the hand of our tell me from the hand of my from the hands of your you know there are people that they say i wanted to climb the mountain but i cannot the enemies will not allow me i want to make progress but i cannot the enemies will not allow me i want to live a distinctive life a, a kind of life that is victorious and triumphant but enemies will not allow me why don't you come to the covenant of the lord he has delivered us he has granted us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies we might serve him without fear no fear in your life this year in jesus name no panic in your life this year in jesus name and there is no harassment of the devil in your life this year in jesus name as moses was bold before pharaoh you'll be bold before every enemy and as Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, as they were bold before uh, Nebuchadnezzar, you'll be bold before their fire and before their furnace in Jesus' name. As Peter and John were bold before the Sanhedrin, you'll be bold every day, every time in Jesus' name. The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of a sound mind and of a fearless mind. And then he has given us the spirit of love. And Christ will prevail in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. When we come to covenant with the Lord, we don't go back home as we came. We go back revived. We go back renewed. We go back revitalized. And every fear that 
that had been in us before every timidity in us before all that is wiped away because now he remembers his covenant and delivers us from the hand of all enemies now we serve the Lord without fear look at verse 75 he says in holiness are you going to serve the Lord this year I said how will you serve the Lord this year how will you show you a precious person before the Lord this year how will you show that you're a peculiar person in the sight of the Lord this year that everywhere you go everything you do it will be in holiness and righteousness before him how many days of our lives all the days of our life like Enoch did not backslide all those 300 years you will not backslide in Jesus name in holiness there's humility you serve the Lord in humility all the days of your life in holiness there is obedience you serve the Lord with obedience all the days of your life in the holiness there is love there's loyalty you will serve the Lord with love and loyalty all the days of your life in holiness there is innocent he'll make you innocent and you'll have integrity everywhere you go in your office you'll have integrity and and the innocence in Jesus name and is the new nature of Christ that comes into us because now he has imparted unto us that new nature and your new creature and that holiness that new nature will continue with you in Jesus name in holiness there's endurance he that endures to the end the same shall be saved you will never give up you'll never be conquered you'll, ne you'll not stop your journey halfway in Jesus name you will endure to the end in Jesus name in holiness a separation from the world know you not the friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord and, will and I will receive you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the Lord Almighty in holiness a separation from the world and you will serve the Lord with, with separation from the world in Jesus name in holiness and sincerity and steadfastness you are steadfast with the Lord you are moving on with the Lord nothing turns you here nothing turns you there and you are sincere in everything that you do and you take the level of insincerity away from your service away from your utterance away from your life this holiness the Lord is saying that he will grant us to be delivered from the hands of all our enemies all our tempters all our oppressors and then we'll serve the lord in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life the lord confirm it and affirm it in every one of our lives in jesus name number three now number three is the completeness of provision of his ears where the ears of the lord the ears of the lord will hear it everything that belongs to the lord and we have the completeness of provision for his ears we're coming to romans chapter 8 in romans chapter 8 i'm reading to you here from verse 16 romans chapter 8 verse 16 it says the spirit bear it witness with our spirit that we are children of god the spirit is bearing witness in my spirit i am a child of god how about you over there i said how about you over there we're members of his family of his bone of his flesh will belong to the Lord and everything he has belongs to us he went to Calvary not for himself but for you and for me and he paid the price at Calvary not for himself but for you and for me he got all the blessings of God because he's the very son of God and the father has committed all things into his son not just for him but for you and I and now it says in verse 17 in verse 17 it says and eight children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ whatever Christ has were joint heirs with him is happy I'm happy is holy I'm holy 
he prospered and prospered is promoted to the high heavens and i see it in heavenly places with him the father never says no to the son and the father will never say no to me and everything that jesus desires in fact everything is handed over unto him and we're heirs of god and joint heirs with the lord jesus christ look at your life this first sunday of this new year this first covenant service of this new year whatever christ will not have you will not have he doesn't have sickness you'll not have sickness he doesn't have oppression you'll not have oppression satan cannot have dominion over him is beside the throne of the almighty god satan will not have dominion over you and then he has the fullness of joy you'll have the fullness of joy he has the fullness of power you'll have the fullness of power all the angels are worshiping him every knee bowing unto him every power will bow before you in jesus name he says all power all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth go ye therefore you are a partaker of his inheritance all power that you need anywhere everywhere as you go out will be given unto you in jesus name this year for you is a year of victory this year for you is a year of triumph this year for you is a year of dominion and this year for you will be a triumphant year in jesus name you will stand but you are sitting down i said you will stand i said you will stand and then you will march upon every calamity every sickness will come under your feet every infirmity will come under your feet every evil power will come under your feet powers of darkness will come under your feet all the things that defeated you before this time and before this year everything will come under your feet in jesus name you will trample over all the power of the enemy serpent or scorpion and every evil power you will march on them let let me see you march and see how you are going to march all through the year all through the year all through the year all through the year you will march on them in jesus name no power will push you down no power will destroy you you now inherit everything what the lord open your mouth and tell the lord open your mouth and tell the lord i inherit i inherit and i have faith in the covenant keeping god i have faith in the covenant keeping god everything is said will be mine will be mine every victory is said he has given will be mine everything 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 you have everything he has lifted you up he has raised you up he has promoted you you are not where you used to be and what used to happen to you will not happen again you are victorious from today tell the lord tell the lord victory victory there's salvation available at the moment you call whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved there is healing at the moment you call i will do a great thing in their midst call upon me i will show you great and mighty things that you have not known is the omnipotent god omnipotent god there's nothing beyond his power that challenge in your life is not beyond his power that infirmity is not beyond his power that weakness is not beyond his power it is omnipotent but then we have the condition of obedience the condition of obedience tell the lord by your grace i will obey by faith i will obey because i love you i will obey because i belong to you i will obey and because the grace of god is in my life i will obey and because i'm peculiar before you i'm precious unto you and i'm totally giving unto you i will obey and then i remember that you have obligation to all your people and i know you are going to fulfill all your obligations 
you are not going to deny me you are not going to say no you have said yes already in Christ you have said yes and amen on the throne you have said yes and amen because of Calvary you have said yes and amen and because I'm precious before you you have said yes and amen it is mine it is mine it is mine all the promises are mine and I confess your obligation and I confess your obligation confess that before the Lord and say yes Lord I know you are obliged to help me you are obliged to save me you are obliged to deliver me you are obliged to kill me you are obliged to answer my prayer I confess that open your mouth wide open your mouth wide open your mouth wide and I will feel it open your mouth wide and I will feel it remember God is faithful God is faithful God is faithful he comes so peculiar he's faithful to his covenant he's faithful to his peculiar people you're a peculiar person in the sight of the Lord and the Lord is faithful to his covenant as well as to his peculiar people who are the peculiar people of God those who are saved who are the peculiar people of God those who are standing firm who are the peculiar people of God those who are obedient to the word of the Lord every time in every situation who are the peculiar people of God those who accept the word of the Almighty and they will not accept the word of the devil the word of Satan the word of enemies or the word of demons who are the peculiar people of God they're the people who have come into covenant relationship with the Lord and they are firm in their commitment to the commandments to all his perpetual plan the perpetual plan that he wants you to live that victorious life the perpetual plan he wants every member of his family to demonstrate the power of a child of God the dominion of a child of God the plan he has for your peculiar life you are the center of that plan the center of that will and you are not here and there you abide firm at that center of the will of God and the purpose of God for your life you abide in that and your purpose in your heart you will not see your purpose in your heart you will not be defiled your purpose in your heart you will not sin with your mouth you will not sin with your hand you will not sin with your feet you will not sin with any member of your body and with that purpose in heart you are cleaving unto the Lord abiding in the Lord and nothing will turn you around those are the people you find yourself in Babylon you are standing you find yourself in Rome you are standing you find yourself in a Greece you are standing you find yourself in any community in any household and you are standing and you keep on standing those are the people they are the people who believe in the Lord and they're standing firm and they're cleaving unto the Lord and then the present promises of the Lord you consider them and you confess them and you confront them in your life and you have faith you have faith you have faith in the present promises of the Lord the promise of everything that you need the promise of everything that you desire the promise of everything that has said it will grant unto you you have a firm faith in that you believe you believe you believe you doubt not you doubt not you speak to that mountain you say it out and then you so much believe you see it done and you put action to your faith what I believe I act out I believe so have I spoken and then you keep on rejoicing before the Lord you keep on rejoicing before the Lord because I know it is done I know it is done I know it is 
is done and from this first day of the year you are coming to the fullness of the grace of God the fullness of the goodness of God the fullness of the provision of God the fullness of the promises of God the fullness of the power of God the fullness of all your inheritance from Calvary you come into the fullness and then you understand that because of the fullness you have, you have covenant and the promises of healing he says i am the lord that he let you i am the lord that he let you and you say i will not carry sickness out of this place this first day and this first sunday of the year i am healed i have health i have dominion i have strength i have power and i'm going to go on in the strength in the might in the health of the lord everything the lord has promised you claim them you receive them you confirm them you confess them before the lord and then the holiness he gives you holiness he says he will deliver you he'll deliver you from all your enemies and then he'll make you to serve him day and night all the days of your life in holiness in humility he'll make you to serve him in obedience he'll make you to serve him in love and loyalty he'll make you to serve him in integrity and innocence he'll make you to serve him with a new nature and a divine nature he'll make you to serve him with endurance and endurance of the spirit of god upon your life he'll make you to serve him totally separated from the world he'll make you to serve him sincere and steadfast and single-minded before the lord all the days of your life and then you become an heir and you inherit everything the lord purchased at calvary you inherit everything the lord has provided and now you can say i know everything that he purchased at calvary everything belongs to me everything is yours everything is yours all the promises of god are yes and amen in christ all the promises they are yes and amen in christ accept them accept them believe them receive them and confess them and say it is mine it is mine everything it is mine whatever you have opened your mouth to declare before the lord it is done it is done and you give glory to god now and you rejoice before the lord now because you know he has answered your prayer because you know he has fulfilled his promise because you know he has granted everything because our god is able 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 to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or see according to his power that walketh in us according to his power that walketh in us in jesus name we pray in your life i said in jesus name we pray in your family i said in jesus name we pray already you have opened your mouth wide before the lord and the lord has filled it the lord has answered your prayer every good thing you have demanded every good thing you have claimed every good thing you are standing on they are confirmed in your life in jesus name god has issued a decree to satan to demons all powers of darkness and to all enemies he has given them that decree he has drawn a circle around you that they should never enter into that circle the lord has blessed you 
from this day forward you carry authority you carry power you carry anointing you carry the promises of god they are yes and amen in your life in jesus name what are you raise up your hand you are online raise up your hand any state every state anywhere you are any nation where you are if you're lying down because you're weak when you hear the final amen get up because the promise is fulfilled already in jesus name father in jesus name we thank you because of your word we thank you because of the covenant and we thank you because that covenant you keep that covenant with everyone there's no exception in jesus name i pray lord all the benefits of the covenant all the blessings of the covenant and everything you have given out from calvary because of your covenant through christ that will fulfill in every life even at this moment in jesus name lord assurance of salvation for those who have called upon you they've turned away from their sin and they have believed on the lord jesus oh lord i pray assurance of salvation in every heart in jesus name the freedom and the victory that comes with conversion give to everyone in jesus name pray that sin will not have dominion over them anymore in jesus name all the bad habits of the past will not have dominion over them anymore in jesus name and all the defilement of the world that is trying to splash on people on their way to heaven will not come over them in jesus name a converted life a changed life a transformed life a holy life a pure life you give to everyone in jesus name and the grace to keep on in obedience to the lord that grace you give to everyone in jesus name Lord, I pray for those who want to be sanctified and holy and pure through and through, pure in their heart, pure in their spirit, and pure in their soul, and pure in the inner man, and pure in their language, and pure and holy in the action of their hand, that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, grant to everyone in Jesus' name with the covenant you have made that you will deliver every one of your people from the power and from the pressure and from the opposition from the persecution of their enemies i pray you set everyone free from all their enemies in jesus name grant us that holiness that is before you holiness that is transparent holiness that is well seen and visible holiness that comes from the heart and comes through the life holiness every day and holiness every moment holiness that prepares us for heaven grant to everyone in jesus name you said you have granted unto us power power over every serpent over every scorpion over every evil sin and over every snake and over every demonic power that will walk on serpents and scorpions i pray that that power in a very definite way grant to everyone in jesus name and lord i pray you have said no power will be able to hurt us Lord, everyone without exception, the boy, the girl, the youth, the young boy, and the young girl, and the adults, the fathers, the mothers, the leaders, the workers, members, everyone, grant us this year from this moment. The power that overcomes every evil thing in Jesus' name. And Lord, 
right now I pray any sickness in anyone there anywhere those online and those in the districts and those in every region and those in every state and every nation anywhere we're hearing your word together now Lord I pray that sickness I command come out in Jesus name I pray Lord instead of weakness there will be strength instead of sickness there will be health I pray that you raise up your people from every bed of affliction in Jesus name and the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon your people and I pray Lord the power to stand bold and the power to stand effectively persuasively before anyone that will speak to grant us that boldness and power in Jesus name and I pray as we are now heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ anything that will not come on Christ will not come upon us and every blessing belonging to Christ will belong to us in Jesus name help us as we go out we go out in victory we go out in power we go out in authority we go out in the fullness of blessing in Jesus name good testimony in every man joy in every heart assurance in every life this year every one of us will sing the songs of victory confirm it in every life Lord we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray the Lord confirm a perpetual amen in every one of your lives in Jesus.